Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the last day, the last meditation on the cross. Easter or the Resurrection Sunday, however you want to call us, to call it. I hope these this journey which we started on Ash Wednesday until this day I hope it was a blessing to you the first I think the first uh, after Ash Wednesday the first six days some of the meditations were in Tamil I thank my wife who could talk 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 that record that and after that for the next 40 days I could record short meditations under 10 minutes on the meditations of the cross and also of the resurrected Savior. I read a quote somewhere which said like this, Jesus entered through a door marked no entry and Jesus left out through a door marked no exit. He entered through a door marked no entry that is the womb of a virgin. A, a virgin's womb cannot give birth to a child. But he came through a door which said no entry and he left out through a door which said no exit. You cannot leave a tomb, you cannot leave a tomb. But he left out through a door marked no exit. When you read 1 Peter and chapter 1, just the first few verses, we, we see the blessings because of the resurrections of Christ. You now, when you read the entire New Testament, you can collect at least 50 to 60 points on what are all the blessings of the resurrection, blessings of resurrection, the resurrection blessing. But I just want to dwell on these three verses, 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 5. It talks on four points, four points, and also I will be collecting few verses from Romans and Corinthians. What are all the resurrection blessings? What are all the blessings of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Number one, number one, verse three begins like this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The first blessing of resurrection is this, because Jesus resurrected himself, I am born again, I am born again. If Jesus hadn't resurrected, I would have perished. There is no hope for me. You know, they say, if you are born once, you die twice. If you are born twice, you die once. Hope you understand that quote. If you are born once, just your the birth from your mother's womb, you die twice, your spiritual death and your physical death. But if you are born twice, one is from your mother's womb, another one is this born again experience, you die only once. That is just your physical death. There is no spiritual death, you live for eternity. The first resurrection blessing is that you are born again, born again. Second, second, that same verse says, a living hope, you are born again to a living hope. We are not hopeless. Or our hope is not just for a matter of time. But we are born into a living hope. A hope that can never die. The world may perish. Heaven and earth may pass away. But this hope stands forever. This hope stands forever. We are born again to a living hope. Living hope. Number four, number four, the fourth verse gives us a third point. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. First one, we are born again. Number two, we are born into a living hope. Number three, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we get an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Wow, that's nice, right? We get an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled. Now we all get inheritance from our parents. But all those can perish one day. If somebody has given you an inheritance of one crore rupees, it can fade away. 
it can spoil, it can perish. But the inheritance that comes from the, because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is incorruptible, it is undefiled, it can never perish, it can never spoil, it can never fade. And verse 5, the fourth point, it says, through faith, because Christ resurrected, through faith, we are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Number one, born again. Number two, living hope. Number three, an, in, an undefiled, incorruptible inheritance. Number four, we are protected by the power of God. The resurrection is not just an event that took place 2000 years ago, but it is still today. It is that power that protects us. It is that resurrection power that protects us. That is why Apostle Paul says, I consider everything rubbish so that I will know the power of his resurrection. I will know the power of his resurrection. When you read Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4 and verse 25, it says like this, Paul writes, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Because he is alive because he was raised because of that resurrection. We are justified. What does justification mean? It made us sit. It made us right with God. It makes us right with God. We were the enemies of God. All our deeds was, were wrong in the eyes of God. Not just because he died, but because he rose again. Now we are at right with God. We are being, we are justified because of it. First one, we are born again. Number two, living hope. Number three, a inheritance, an undefiled, incorruptible inheritance. Number four, protected by the power of God. Number five, we are justified. Number six, Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. A very beautiful verse. It says like this, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. The resurrection blessing is not just spiritual, but it is even physical. It is even physical. Will give life to your mortal bodies through the spirit who dwells in you. Now this verse, if I have to simplify it, is just like this. The spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is able enough even to raise your mortal bodies. Maybe you are physically ill. Maybe there is some kind of physical weakness. The spirit who raised Christ from the dead. That resurrection power. That spirit of resurrection power. That spirit can give even life to my mortal bodies. And finally, I want to quote with the very things that we started this 40 day journey. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 14. Simple it says, if Christ hadn't raised, our preaching is in vain. Our faith is useless. Verse 15 says, we would have been misrepresented, representing God. We would have been false witness. And then it says, the dead would not have been raised. And in verse 19, it simply finishes like this. We would have been most pitied. We would have been most pitied. The resurrection of Christ is the crux to our salvation, to our faith and our journey towards eternity. Enjoy this day with your friends and family, but at the same time, remember, there is a greater power in store for you, working in your spirit, soul and body to revive you and to resurrect you. Would you ask God even this day? Do ask God, ask God, Lord, let your resurrection power revive me even to you. Father, we pray, Lord, let that resurrection power revive our spirit, soul and body. If there are areas where we are down, Lord, I pray that you will revive us once again. Revive us. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.